All right, here's the scenario. You've been watching tutorials for one, two, maybe three or more years, and now they just don't seem to be challenging to you anymore or just aren't quite as interesting as they used to feel. And now you're at a place where you're just not progressing anymore. You know that there's a lot more to learn, but you can't find it and tutorials just aren't offering the things that scratch your itch. I have found myself in that position before and I wanna show you a technique that I did all of 2024 and it really improved my work and my craft so much. First, I think it's important to understand how this happens if we're able to understand it and move past it. At their core, tutorials offer problems and solutions in a single piece of content, which allows you to go from being reliant on tutorials to be able to make anything to being able to remember all that stuff and make things that you come up with yourself. Now, problems that tutorials solve or say, hey, this is a design, an environment, whatever, I'm gonna show you how to make it. You don't know how to make it, this video will show you that. Or say, hey, I don't know how to make a cloth simulation, that's the problem, the video will solve it. Now, after a couple of years of doing this, those tutorials just stop being useful. You stop really needing the ones that keep getting uploaded or the ones that have existed for a long time. And that's exactly what had been happening to me for quite a while. And I felt stagnant. I felt like I wasn't learning anything new yet. I saw a lot of work that I didn't know how to do. And I knew there was things to learn, but I was too reliant on YouTube tutorials and courses. So how did I move past this? I did thematic studies of large groups of work with the goal of studying them enough to find things that I don't know how to do. First, I have to pick a topic. I have to collect the inspiration on that topic. Then I have to start looking at those images and videos and start getting challenged. The goal here is to make a lot of project files. You don't have to finish them, but find things that really challenge you. Then after a lot of R&D, distill all of this work into five really cool images that feel like they fit within the work that you collected for this project. Now, I mentioned I did this all of 2024. There were a ton of videos that I uploaded that year that were breakdowns of projects. Those projects came from those self-appointed research and development sprints that I did. I would make those boards and really study them and they would challenge me. I'm gonna use this video as an example to show you how I did all of that. This video was called The Power of Curves and this was a product of learning really cool things. I wanted to see how far I can take using geometry nodes with curves to make really beautiful animations. So first I collected a Pinterest board of just images that I thought were cool. Don't pick images that you think you know how to do, just pick images that you think are cool because that will lead you to roadblocks. Let's take this animation for example. I wanted to make something that kind of looked like an eyeball of curves. So the first thing I didn't know how to do was how to array all of those curves in a circular pattern and have them point outward. So that was a rabbit hole that I had to go down to to learn how to basically point things out based on the normal. Then I had to figure out how to displace them properly, how to get those curves to actually move in a way that I wanted and controlled, and I didn't understand how to do that. That was more research that I had to do. Then I had to learn how to get light to properly move up and down these curves and how to randomly place those lights so not all the curves had those moving lights on them. All of those things were things I did not know how to do. I had to go through Blender subreddits and forums and a lot of hair pulling to figure these things out. And it resulted in one of my absolute favorite animations I've ever done. Another really cool and kind of simple problem solving was I found this image and I wanted to make something similar to it. So my first task was to take curves and have smaller and smaller, smaller ones moving inwards first to be able to displace them. I did not know how to do that in geometry nodes, which led me to figuring out how to use simulation nodes in a very simple way to get them to sort of array inward. And then all I had to do was displace them and figure out some things that I already knew how to do, but it, it taught me how to use a really simple tool, which is the simulation nodes very primitively. Now this one I was really inspired by. I wanted to figure out how to take a big sort of array of curves and just sort of like make them move around, uh, kind of like something you would see in the ocean. So first, because I figured out how to use simulation nodes to create an array, I created an array of those curves. Then I was able to displace these guys, but the problem was the bottoms of them were moving with the displacement, which meant I had to figure out how to isolate the displacement 
only to the top portion, which led me to figuring out how to use position information to isolate the bottom to keep it still and have the top only move and have some control. That took a little bit of R&D on my end to understand vector math, understand position and how to mix things together in order to get that to look nice. Now I did this multiple times and I'm even working on the next one, which is all about recreating really cool sci-fi looking things. And there will be a lot of things that I learned from that that will turn into tutorials that I put on this channel. So it not only benefits me personally, it benefits the YouTube channel, it benefits the Patreon because all of these projects I ended up putting on Patreon. And like I said, I'm distilling, I'm creating five or so images from each one and those turn into tutorials for everything that I'm doing. So for me personally, it's been a huge, huge benefit. And you as an artist doing whatever you wanna do with your art, I also think it is going to be a huge, huge benefit to do these kind of sprints. So to summarize this process, it goes to picking a topic, collecting inspiration on that topic, get as much as you can, then start diving into the things that you think are interesting and start getting challenged and make a lot of different project files. Then once you've gone through the ringer of research and reddits and YouTubes and all of the hair pulling frustration of learning things you don't know how to do, distill those into five really cool designs that you can be proud of and put on your portfolio, your Instagram, your own work, doing whatever you want. I would recommend doing that once a month and I'm still doing that. All of my processes like this, they end up as full collections on my Patreon. If you wanna check that out, my Patreon is linked in the description and every single month, I've been putting out these projects of really learning things and giving everyone those new topics, but it doesn't all stay on Patreon. The YouTube channel is also being populated with all of these research and development projects too. So you can get that stuff on Patreon and you can get it here on YouTube. If you wanna check out the Patreon, you can get a discount if you subscribe annually, but enough of that that hopefully you got something really cool from this. Hopefully you can really progress and move past feeling like you're in a stagnant rut if you can relate to that. And uh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.